welcome to episode 14 of the Raise Up podcast. Welcome. I'm Athena. I'm Charlie. Mm -hmm. And we are coming to you guys from our EMS training room at, uh, in our Anchorage headquarters. So you can kind of see some of the stuff back there. There was some uh, other props, but they thought that was weird. They didn't want the arm out there by itself, but yeah. the head's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we got airway management. We just don't have IV training showing stuff in the back. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, you know, the topic today was going to be about service and engagement. And this training room is a great example of the service that we provide to our team. We absolutely believe that we have internal customers and external customers. And this room was built for the purpose of serving the team so that they were still engaged in their training. So. And I think our community too, because yeah. I mean, not only do we train our teams, but we train some of our partners too, like uh, LifeMed and Guardian and other places too, that we let them come in and do some training here also. So. Yeah, and so really service is more about this idea of being part of the community, not just the services that we're providing to our customers. Those are absolutely important and that helps us pay the bills, but there's this bigger idea of service. You know, the training room was a really great addition for us to put on here. We, uh, we had a smaller training room that we used for um, onboarding people and doing things like this, but um, I think it came up with a great idea of putting a training room up here and really makes it nice because it's away from everybody and then they can come up here and train and we can leave mannequins and sims and things up here that we can do. So it doesn't have to be packed up for the next team to be here and then we're not fighting for space here either. And that uh, really gives uh, our team and then also CDL training sometimes, sometimes they come up here and do some training too. So it, it, it's just not for AMT, but it works for both sides, a AMT yeah. and BAC. It's really a multi-use room, but it's primarily being used right now for the EMT classes. And if you guys can see right outside this, we have a full gym that we put up here for our medics also mm -hmm. too, so they can have a place to work out since we're on call 24 hours a day. We wanna make sure that they get that health and fitness in too. Yeah, that was a space that was allowed. So we didn't take up the entire section for just the training room. We walled it off and allowed for that, that um, other training room, which would have been physical training. And that's something that maybe isn't a good fit for every organization, but promoting moving your body, staying healthy, allowing for these particular um, spaces for the team is just another layer of the culture that we continue to promote to raise them up to the next space. So uh, it's not used by everybody, but it's used by those that are engaged, and we absolutely encourage it. You know, we have a lot of patients that take a lot of lifting facilities and things like that too. So it's nice to keep these guys in shape and keep their muscles up. And, you know, we never know what kind of call we're going to get and how many people we're going to need. So it's nice that they are able to keep their self in shape and uh, their mental health too. I mean, it's really nice to come here and out for a long day and come out here and lift some weights or do the treadmill or do an elliptical and get yourself uh, off, the, um, off the daily tasks. Yeah. And Getting extra oxygen flowing through your body is always a good thing and, and it helps to release some of whatever's going on in your frustrations or your your tension for the day. So we are we believe in that. Absolutely. Well, wow. what do we got? So service isn't just about serving your customer. We, we kind of alluded to that, but it's also um, it's like service and engagement go hand in hand and and that's why it's in the the raise up core values that we have and there was a situation that um, sometimes leadership is going to need to be in that we're going to need to be more engaged in in a particular area because the team members need our support and charlie i was hoping that you'd be willing to like discuss an area where uh, something did get escalated to your level and that you handled it and it was a way that you showed up not in a, I'm not talking about micromanaging or getting in the middle of things. I'm talking about when you're asked to have, when you're asked to give support in a situation because the gatekeepers aren't letting you in or there's too much miscommunication. And um, oftentimes when you get engaged, then the other high level leader gets engaged and you guys are able to work out. Work out. Well, you know, I mean, we have our, uh, our, we have our worker bees, our employees, everybody else is doing it. And then, you know, they're, 
98% of the time they can handle almost all of the situations. And there's 2% of the time that it, we run up against a wall. And uh, you're right, that situation just happened. We had an airline divert with a uh, customer that we've never worked with before, but we that's not uncommon for us. We get a lot of uh, carriers that go over to Asia and other places that sometimes they have to come here for medical or mechanical diverts. And we handle them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It doesn't matter if you call us on Christmas Eve and say you have a divert, we're gonna make it happen. Um, some of these people get off the plane with 80 or 90 people, some get off with 300 people. And uh, some of the services we provide is the transportation, the logistics, um, also taking care of all the hotels, the food, the transportation, anybody that has to go to the hospitals, medical, um, all the way down to getting diapers for yep. somebody that didn't have enough diapers for their baby on their thing. Yep. So um, we have this airline divert that came through and uh, we ended up, uh, there was a dispute on the bill and they wanted to escalate it and be discounted. And we did all the services. And this was like three or four months ago, we did the services. And uh, so uh, our team was having a hard time with the, uh, the sales team that was in charge of the divert, uh, not on our side, on their side. And, and um, we were getting pushed up against a wall. So I got a text yesterday and, um, and I, 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 I didn't get to it promptly, but I did uh, call them that that afternoon and I wasn't able to get in touch with them. They gave me a call back and then um, it was a lot of a hustle and bustle and talking to the manager and they escalated up to their senior vice president. And in doing so, him and I were able to see eye to eye because the leveling was, the level field was a little bit more leave and I wasn't dealing with the sage, sales agent. He wasn't dealing with the CEO of the company. Um, so uh, today it worked out really well. I mean, I talked to the vice president of the company. The vice president got to hear what our side was and what we did and how we did it. And he appreciated it and he understood. I think there were some clarification things that were not clarified to him and nor his team. And I don't think everybody was talking on the same page but again the team saw that they were running up against a wall and they escalated it to Athena which Athena escalated it up to me and just said hey would you take care of this and you know it was a it was a good conversation it was uh we both saw eye to eye and um and then one of our partners was having a problem with the same company that was doing it he contacted me and said he hadn't been paid either and so I was able to pass that information on to one of our partners too because at the airlines we all try to work together and when we get people that come in and work um with us from a different region. Um, this one happened to be in Canada. This was the, the Canadian airline. Um, they're not used to the practices that we do here in Alaska or the US and we're a little bit different than everybody else. So it's great that we have the partnerships with all the different airline carriers, the airlines, the uh, all the way up to the chief of staffs up in the um, airports, um, the directors and that stuff. So we're able to work really well with them. So uh, we were able to resolve the situation pretty easily. You know, and what I what I really heard in this whole as it was unfolding was sometimes when when top leadership is communicating to middle management, middle management doesn't see the bigger picture. And so it's necessary to escalate it up to the next level because then the two of you having a similar position understand how business works and it made sense whereas middle management or lower management might have just been well i just don't agree with your business practices and what i loved about this situation is that you were like hey this is our service is our service and our price is our price and it's our price because we have all of these years of expertise doing this and we provide excellent customer service and you were really firm on explaining to them that this isn't, we don't do discounts, this is our price, and really valuing what we sell and what we provide to our customers. Well, and explaining on the ambulance side too, it's like, we're just like the ambulance service. We, we respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, usually not mattering what the patient is as long as it's within our scope. Mm -hmm. And I told them the same thing on the, on the BAC side is like, you know, we have this team in place and we have the hours that we put into it and how much it costs is because it doesn't matter if my team is at home at bed or sleeping or they're with their wives or kids or it's a holiday. It's holiday we're going to make sure they take care of it. And in doing so, we make sure we take care of our team on it and they get so many hours dedicated to them for doing a divert. Yeah. And they really like them because, you know, sometimes they can take an hour or two or sometimes they take three. It just matters on how they're going to go, but they always know that's a guarantee. And so we always want to make sure our team's guaranteed. And you know, just explaining to these people, hey, you guys understand that we get everything that goes over Asia from the West Coast comes over our yep. side. And so we get sometimes uh, 10 minutes notice, sometimes we get three hours notice, but uh, sometimes they're already on the ground, they can't fix the plane, so they want us to show up ASAP. So it, it really takes a team to make sure that we can take care of that 
uh, requests that they're looking for. Because when you have to start the buses in the middle of the winter, you got to warm them up, you got to get them ready, you got to get everybody here, you got to do your safety checks. And then we have to get there and pick them up. And then we have to do it in a safe manner that we're getting their team there. And, yeah. and we have to show up with our best face because these people are pretty upset. They're not going they're, to the they're destination they're going to. They're stressed out. They're going to miss flights. So the calmer and the better that we are, uh, the more successful it's going to be for the for the entire team and for the divert and for the customers. Yeah. And, you know, the airlines are our customers, but their customers are the ones that are on the ground. So they're our customers, too, when we take them. So we want to make sure that they're insured the best treatment possible. And I, I tell you, we get rave reviews over our diverts because we have it so damn pat that we have done it for so long system. now that we have a great system. We work with our managers really well. And when they don't have a person here that can... Um, be the liaison between them and us um we are it and so we work directly with the ground handlers and from the moment they get off the plane until the moment they get back on the plane it's our customer and so we we, we take pride in making sure that they do a good job and just as i explained to this gentleman and he saw the value and sometimes it's seeing the value and when as athena was saying is the middle management people and i think i was dealing with a senior salesperson i wasn't even dealing with a management person um he didn't see the value on what that was and um and he was just questioning the bill and the bill's the bill. And I, I told him it's no different that bill than anybody else. And the grand handler was the same way. He told him that he charges them the same price too. So um, price didn't seem to be the issue anymore once they found out why the service is what it was. And sometimes just explain it to them in a way that our CSAs or our accounting team wouldn't be able to explain the same way I would. Yeah. So. And I think that was a respect thing too that you took the time to address the issue with him directly instead of just passing it off to someone else when well, he felt the same way after i dealt with his management team and it didn't go as well um they escalated it up to him and then he says yeah i usually don't get involved in this and i said neither do i you know we're right, in the same right, boat right. you know i mean we have people in, t in in our teams and management that usually take care of this but obviously this has gotten to a level that you had to go here too so right. and we're here for our team like that i mean um there's not very often it has to happen but sometimes it's easier for two owners or two managers or two ceos or coos or whoever it might be to be able to talk to each other because they've already been through the muck and they know what it's about, you know? Well, and it's really, it's decision makers. When yes. the decision makers get involved, you can decide right away if there's going to be a change in whatever, yes. and he can decide right away what's going to happen. And then you guys can put action behind that because yes. the team works for you. And the so. same with our, some of our team too. I mean, they're, they're limited on what actions they can take without management approval. You know, they, if yeah. there's a complaint or something happens, what do we do and how do we take care of the customer on that? And they're, they have some leeway to be able to take care of that customer and take care of them. But once it gets to a certain point, it's better for them to check with us or check with you know, Steven or one of our other managers yeah. and say, hey, this is the problem. This is what we're going to do. And, you know, and we usually stand by their decisions 100%. Yeah, and I think that's another part of the service is when you're you're taking care of the customer, but then you're also taking care of the internal customer, which is your support team, because they're all part of, they're all equally important in the support team space. And so supporting your leadership that are working underneath you and, and making sure that you're standing by what they said, even if you don't agree sometimes or you're not, oh, or you need to redirect them in, well, this is how I see it. That doesn't happen to us very often, but every once in a while we have to ask, so tell me what, you're think what you were thinking when you were processing that, that opportunity, and they'll tell you. You know, and everybody can quarterback that a little different way after the situation happened. We can always say, well, we should have did this, this, and this. But when you're in the heat of the moment and you're trying to take care of the customer and you're trying to take care of the team and everything else like that, you make the best decision you have at that time. It's easy for us to go back and say, well, we would have probably done this, but it, it, the outcome was good and it was it, it, it met our clients expectations and met ours needs maybe we'd have tweaked it a little yeah. bit but in the long run it, it gets taken care of uh in a good way just maybe not the way we would have took care of it initially but it doesn't mean that our rights our ways the always the right way there's another way sometimes that can be just as effective there's and many good. right ways yes and and that's what we explain to the team yes and that's another reason why when we are working with them that we reiterate that there isn't a failure. It's not a, um, you didn't fail here. There's a growth opportunity and, or, or there's an unintended outcome, but it's, it's never this like devastating, oh, you failed or you let me down or whatever, because our goal is to fan the flame of growth raise and, them up. and to raise them up. 
And when you're disparaging them, that's the opposite of what we're doing here. And sometimes we disparage people and we don't even realize it, but the goal is to be an uplifter and to keep encouraging them to keep stepping out in courage to like make that choice or that decision. If it's within the parameters that you're allowing, because there's some people that you gotta kind of like encourage to get out of the nest a little bit and you know, and on this divert, it gave us a, a learning moment also, if you look at it, because um, we realized that with some ones that are carriers not from the U.S. or somewhere else, that we probably have to have some extra layers involved into our decision making on taking those ones on, too, and, yes. and make sure we have some more signed contracting and things like this. Because our other ones that are U.S. based and they're here all the time, we they just know us and we've been with them and they know exactly what to expect from us. And in this uh, circumstance, they didn't. And uh I, I think there was a little bit more, um, if there was more clarity in the beginning, or if they would have asked for more clarity, uh, it would have probably been a little bit easier on this one. So, and, and I love that because I absolutely, that was my discussion this morning with, with our accounting team is how can we be better in this instance to prevent this? And so they came up with some really great ideas that we'll be implementing as a result. A teaching moment for us. Yeah. 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 So we're always learning and evolving as we go to, too. I mean, <clears throat> circumstances happen that we're not uh, used to or accustomed, and we have to look at that and say, how can we make this better next time for the customer and for us and for our team? And then we don't have extra time spent into this and, and there, but you know, you don't know what you don't know until it happens. And like listening to the client, like the client conveyed to you what some of the, what the misunderstandings were, and then you're able to share that with the rest of the group. And allowing them to be part of the solution is also an important part of serving them because they need to understand that the ideas that they have or the collaboration that we have together actually facilitates change within the organization. Yeah. I, uh looking at some of our previous divert clients and seeing how smoothly things ran and how it worked. And, you know, um, we deal a lot with the military that comes through here. We have a lot of military that comes through here. And yeah. those guys are so used to hurry up and stand by that they're really happy to hear when they something's happening, that there's a plan, there's an action, and something's being taken and they're moving to the right spot so yeah. they can get to their place. And they're so thankful because, you know, um, Sometimes they have to sleep on floors and you know and have limited chairs. bathrooms and yes. chairs and stuff like that, and they get a comfortable place. So we appreciate that too to be able to give back to those people. Yeah, yeah. And in in our mind, when we're delivering a service, how can we do it uh, with the customer service in mind? How can we do it quickly? How can we do it efficiently? And so our mind around these diverts is. How can we get these people to their destination in the most, um, in the best way possible, as quick as possible? And so you've really refined that service part that we offer. You've like really dialed it in to get them in and get them out. Well, and you know, that's working with our partners at the hotels too, and catering and food and everything else that we have to do because. You know, when you have 280 people that drop down and you need to find rooms for them. So I, I don't know if you guys know that we actually found the rooms, we find the food, we find the transportation, we find everything else for them. So yeah. there's a lot of people and a lot of moving parts at the same time, but we're really lucky. We work with the GMs, we work with all the GMs at the hotels and they know that if I'm calling them at two o'clock in the morning, something's going on and um, they're fast reacting. And you know, it's all of us are selling last minute inventory that can't be replaced the next day. So yes, as when expires. I say that, everything expires after midnight. Yeah. The rooms that they have at the at the hotels, the rooms, I mean, the, the, the transportation we do, we can never make that up. Um, every day is the day that we get to work within a 24 hour period. And the same thing with the hotels, their, their times are a little bit different, but it's everything expires. And so they're very thankful for the inventories that we get to sell for them because that's revenue that they get to bring in. Um, it's also the food, but also having those guys hold so much food in their freezers and keep a constant stock in for us because when we have somebody that comes in, um, you're feeding 280 people, sometimes three meals. Yes. And if they're stuck here for four days, six days. So the logistics they have to carry on their side to make sure they're doing it too. And again, with our partnership with them, and it works out really well, it's a smooth, and, machine and when we first started doing it it wasn't near as smooth but now it made it really nice i mean it's uh yeah. they got the ticketing system it usually it takes less than 30 seconds to check somebody in it's, it's it's amazing at how efficient it's gotten but also another piece of that is that we do business with like-minded individuals and so those 
managers of those hotels. We've chosen to work with them because they understand that we're servicing these visitors to our state. And they absolutely want the business, but they have to have a level of engagement within their own organization in order to get our business. And so making those expectations really clear. And they also know if there's something going on in the middle of the night that they can, that, that phone line reaches across the other way and they can call us straight and say, hey, I've got this going on, it's urgent, can you help me? And we would do that for them on the flip side. And, and we so, do do it for them. Yes. I mean, we do have those same clients at that, that same hotels that need help with transportation or they've had to move people to different hotels because of something that's happened at their hotel. So how can we move them from one place to another? So the partnerships, as we've talked in so many different series are so huge because to be able to have that phone call and be able to call somebody, you know, if you normally call a hotel, you might not be able to get the rooms you would if you called the GM because the GM knows that those other people are yeah. not checking in until four o'clock or seven o'clock the next day and she knows she can turn those rooms. So she's more willing to let those rooms go so she can get a double booking on it and be able to, to, to have them. So, but your front desk clerk or your CSA, your customer service agent is not gonna be able to have that direct information. So having those contacts and be able to contact them and let them know. And then they, they know payments always can be guaranteed with us, you know, yes. no matter what, even if the airlines a slow pay, we might end up paying for it in advance and just build the airlines for it because we want them to know that when we're booking, you know, 300 rooms of them, that it's gonna be taken care of. Yes. So another logistics part on our side is moving our credit cards up to a couple hundred thousand, you know, on some of these credit cards, because you can go pay a bill like we did the other day. And it was, you know, an 80, hundred thousand dollar bill that we had to pay out of our uh, credit cards and be able to do it to make sure that they're guaranteed it. And then we go ahead and backfill the airline and do it. And they like that too, just because it's one bill, one thing, it's consolidated, it's really they're not clear. getting everything. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and that's just part of the service that we provide for our client. And, and it's not everybody that we provide that for, no. <laughs> but for the ones um, that do get that higher level of service, that's, that's just one of the, the benefits to working with us. It's in our niche. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So the whole idea of how this service and engagement like comes into play, you know, one of the questions that came up that I was I would love to hear your answer on this would be, spot. We've, been in, we've been in transportation, this is our 24th year. And so Charlie, keeping in your role as the leader of the company, how have you managed to stay engaged? Because there's nobody telling you to go to work. There's nobody, like what I'm, what I'm wondering is, is, I think the question was getting at like, how do you keep yourself motivated in your role for 24 years without having somebody going, Charlie, you need to get your stuff together because you're slacking or Charlie, you're working too hard these days. Like you don't have a boss really, you know what I mean? And so there's nobody motivating you but yourself. You know, I, I mean, we started this in 2000 and there was nobody there either when we first started there. So it's self-motivation. But, you know, I think we've gotten ourselves to a place that, <clears throat> not to say we're not engaged as much, but we don't have to engage as much because we have good team leaders and good people in place in that. And they bring attention to us or they bring something up to us, let us know that there's a problem or incident. Yeah. And I keep my thumb on a lot of different areas that I feel like I need to be part of. And then things get brought up to me and, and it escalates to me. And, um, and, you know, I used to be the problem solver for everybody and you will burn yourself out pretty quickly trying to solve 240 employees problems um, or situations or um, in on that side we just don't deal with their employment side we get a lot of their personal things that happen and then they're which you know we're a family-run business so we we try to run it like a family business but when it grows it doesn't so on top of dealing with personal issues and then work issues you know we we we, we get divided a little bit sometimes so going back to the answer of that is that we have good team members, good management people, and they bring us a bride when we need to. And I think we're able to pull back a little bit more than we did, you know, say five years ago, I, you know, four years ago during the pandemic, it was all hands on deck and we yeah. were, we were working insanely hours. And as we came out of the pandemic, we were really fortunate that we stayed really busy and stayed uh, fairly well during the pandemic and we did really well um, and our team saw how involved we were into it and they really appreciated that we were here to make sure that they kept their jobs and kept everything else there. So I think we have some very loyal, dedicated employees that are uh, good to us and 
they take on a lot of the blunt responsibilities. And then by doing that, we try to reward them. Like our management team, the last two years, we've sent to Hawaii and mm -hmm. sent them there on all paid, perks. yeah, all paid vacation, Hawaii tickets, hotels, cars, everything. We wanted to perk them to let them know that we appreciate what they do for us. So again, to answer your question, how do we stay engaged? We stay engaged in the areas that we feel that we need to, and then we help out in the other areas that we uh, sometimes don't work with in it very much, like accounting. I don't work with accounting very often, but again, with this problem, they wanted to bring it to my attention because it was a, it was a, it was a fair, fair amount of money. So we wanted to make sure that it had a different level of uh, attention. attention. That's what I was looking for. So how have you been able to just stay with BAC? Because we've had other friends who've owned businesses and they, they do a business for a couple years and they do a new business or they go work for somebody else. Like, how have you been able to maintain this level of engagement for all of these years not having a boss? Like, why, how, what keeps you interest, interested in showing up for work? Like my baby. 10 years ago. Or, it's or... my baby. It's, you know, I, I developed it. I, I took it to where it is. We started with nothing. We started with two, two six passenger bus. limousines and a little 20 passenger, what we called our party bus back then. But it was yeah. just really a, a Las Vegas shuttle bus that we made into a party bus because yeah. they didn't really make limo buses back in that time in 2000. So, you know, I mean, it had traction it took off and it just grew and grew and grew so i mean it's like watching your kids grow up that's let me i guess I realized. and i know it's the attachment's not the same you didn't give birth to your kids yeah. but i mean in a way we gave birth to the company the company was there was no bac before 24 years ago and there was a few other um you know we started off as a limo company we started off as a you know we had two limos and a bus and we were going to be the party guys and we were younger and we knew everybody in our age brackets and People were having kids and we were doing birthday parties and events and you know and now we're getting a little bit older and so the limo side is not near as big as it used to be well i shouldn't say that it's probably about the same amount of limos but <laughs> yes. we just grew everything else up yes, in a bigger area it. so yeah. we uh were more of a corporate uh clientele than we are a um retail retail and you know and we used to be all retail and the less corporate and you know what I love about the corporate side is it it's it's steady. It's nuts and bolts. It's your contracts that you can put all your employees on. I mean, what other transportation companies are out there? Or I see we're a logistics company that does transportation, but you know that have 240 employees. I mean, that's a that's a huge amount of number, and uh, so we have to keep. I say feed the beast, but we have to keep feeding the company work to be able to keep those employees active, and then be able to have the lifestyle that we do be able to travel and go do things and you know i mean i think we've put our time in that we're we're taking advantage of it a little bit more yeah. often so it's 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 nice to be able to have that time away from the company but you're still in the company and you're still engaged with it i mean i talk to my team members almost every day uh, but when we're gone some days there's some days we just don't talk to them and and when they need us they call us yeah. but if they don't they don't they don't know? need us so much these days it seems like but and having consistent management, consistent team members. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of the things that we're doing now too is we're switching team roles. So um, some people have worked as a CSA or are now switching over to different roles. And some people have worked as a, um, a manager of the airport department, uh, they're working over here. So we're trying to cross train our employees also and our management teams. So if we do have a manager that becomes sick or ill or has to take off leave or pregnancies or whatever else it might be, that we have somebody else who can cover that side of the wall. So we're making sure that they're cross-trained in what they do. And I would say pretty much almost all of our managers are cross-trained. There's a few that are more dedicated to certain departments, but um, if somebody was to leave at the airport or something happened or something dramatic happened, uh, they would be able to cover that fairly well and we can switch gears. And yeah. that's nice because that leaves less stress off us because shoot, like when we started the wheelchair contract at the airport, I remember I was down there for the first two or three weeks making sure, I always like when we start something new to be a hands-on because as Athena says, with her and I there, we can make a decision just like that where our management team might not make that same decision. So we try to help with those contracts when they first come in. So it, uh, the level of engagement, and our team knows it. I mean, there's be days that I go out and I'll go drive and I'll bring pizzas out to all the team members whether they're out there and go get medium pepperoni pizzas and go deliver them all to the team and just tell them we appreciate them. Yep. And, we're out there working with them or if they get behind, just like Steve was telling me today that Thursday looks pretty busy. I'm like, hey, do you need me to bring clothes in to help? You know, When our team members seem to get stressed because we don't have enough people or we had some extra contracts that came up, um, I will be either the first one they call or the last one they call. First, if it has to happen right away, but last, if they don't. And uh, I, I help with the diverts, I help with uh, other things too, but 
I was telling the theme the other day, I don't think the last time I could drive. And I'm going to probably want to do a Valdez trip this year because I always love that drive to Valdez and taking people down to the canneries and stuff like that. But um, it gives our, our team members some satisfaction seeing that we're out with them in the trenches too sometimes. And I say the trenches is when it really gets busy and they're really stressed and we're asking them to pull overtime shifts. It's nice for them to see that the leadership sometimes is out there helping them also because they feel like they're not just by themselves. Well, and I think that that's your style of serving the internal customer. And it's, um, that's something that I think the team really resonates with. Yeah. You know, I think for me, there has been like... People don't like to drive too much. If, <laughs> if I am honest with myself about staying engaged over the last two and a half decades, it ebb and flows. Like there'll be seasons where I won't feel like I'm roaring to get up in the morning and, and tackle that whatever the regular tasks are of like management. And then there'll be, and those are seasons where I've got to really like look at, look at what I'm doing in my life and say, okay, am I doing my regular routine? Am I taking care of myself? Because oftentimes when my flame starts to flicker or diminish at work, it's a sign that I'm letting go of some other things that I should be doing, or I'm allowing work to t step into spots that it probably shouldn't be in. And I don't even really consider what I do work. I consider it part of my lifestyle. And, and I really enjoy the, the elements that I've grown into within the organization. And I think that another piece of that is figuring out what you're good at and doing those things. You don't, if you hate bookkeeping, don't do anything with bookkeeping. Like stay away from that. Hire somebody and put a double check system in place. But don't lie to yourself and say that I need to learn everything so I can be the backstop. Because all that's going to do is create a situation where you end up doing everything because you know how to do it. And that was something that I think Charlie did really well in his leadership was he didn't choose to learn everything. He chose to stick to these areas that he enjoys and that he feels good when he's doing it and he let uh let other people do those roles not that he's not involved in some of it like he'll ask questions or he'll get the reports that he needs to see the information but he's not physically handling that and so i think that's another piece that i had to learn was i don't need to be able to do everything i need to have an understanding of what the role is but i don't need to know the details of how to punch in that program and do x y and z and then i think also understanding that once you realize the things that you really do love is to lean into those areas one of the the roles that i have in the company is i support the leadership in in their 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 physical mental and well-being not just hey let's talk about the decisions we've got to make for this particular process it's also hey how are you doing you, your plan was that you were going to be hitting the gym three days a week how's that going have you been meeting those goals or what's three things that bring joy in your life and how are you going to introduce those into your regular schedule we talk about all kinds of things but i'm there to support them personally and professionally because i want to see them grow and raise up to the next level and so i realized that that's something about my teacher personality style that is a good fit within what I do today that helps me to stay engaged. So I hope that answered the question of how we stay engaged over time. I think part, a lot of it is entrepreneurship is, is an intrinsic thing. It's, you've either, it's in your blood. I think that's a big piece of it. It's in your blood and you're motivated on your own. And you gotta be willing to help. I mean, that's the whole thing is, is being willing to help our, our team and our members and other people too. You get so many people that look at us for answers because, and, and we don't know everything by any means. We, we don't. Some of this, most of it is we make it up as we go along because oh. the situation has never presented itself to us or anyone else for that matter because it's special. Or we lean on to other people that are our partners and people that are in our industry or whatever else is say, hey, we came up against this situation to have you. And usually somebody within our industry has come up with this and they've already have a plan and a procedure and a action for it. So we kind of look at that too and say, hey, what, what's the best educated case so we can help to help them 
on what they're doing. But there's a lot of people that just call daily just because they need a hookup or they need a person that can do this or that. And, you know, we're very fortunate that we know so many people that we can be able to steer people in the right direction of a transmission or uh, their plumbing went out or, you know, they're having a problem. Passports, you know, I can't get my passport in time. Who can I call? We have a person that we can call to help you with that. I mean, we we have that information and that's, that's, as the older people would understand what a Rolodex is, that's the Rolodex in our mind is that we have these phone numbers and people that we could process and talk to that we can get something to happen or uh, something to move. And that, that's our relationships. Again, going back to our relationships and working with other people, it's just, you know, they know that if we're calling, that we're calling because we're serious. Yeah, and that really, that is the service and engagement piece that just pays forward dividends in community relationships in in growing your company it it really it's an important piece Absolutely. yeah we were just called for uh, one of our ambulances to go and show up at uh, one of the local stores here in town because they're going to do a, a public safety thing so they were asking one of the pas ambulances and uh, we just did the miss michelle ambulance and so we're going to showcase that hopefully on friday at one of our stores here in town and they're going to go there with AFD and APD and the SWAT vans and uh, in, there's going to be other vendors there, but you know, something we could talk about uh, cancer and we could talk about the ambulance and how private ambulance works in our city. Yeah. So. And that's a piece that we're not charging people for. That's no. a service that we're providing to the company or I mean to the community that will just get us more exposure and um, create a stronger awareness around the cause that we've labeled that ambulance to yeah. help promote so well we appreciate you guys joining us for this episode and we hope that uh our spin on service and engagement was helpful to you and if uh you would check us out at www.raiseupmindset.com you can submit a question on our website and we would love to uh, answer that on one of the episodes the best educated answer we can give you <laughs> yes the best one we can give you and please like and subscribe to our youtube page thanks have a good day guys Bye. Bye.